In 1989, President George Bush Sr. issued a sort of challenge to NASA in the form of the Space Exploration Initiative, whose final goal was a manned mission to Mars. NASA responded by commissioning the 90-day report, where they set out exactly what they would need to achieve their goal in a 30-year time frame. Here's a short summary of this plan. A spaceship weighing in at over 1,000 tons and capable of carrying a small crew to Mars and back is constructed in low Earth orbit. To support this massive construction job, huge amounts of orbital and lunar infrastructure, that's fuel depots, refineries, crew stations, and construction hangars, must work around the clock for several years, during which time the Mars crew will train and become accustomed to the Martian conditions on the moon, in a moon base. Apparently ignorant of the glaring differences between Mars and Earth's moon, this small crew would rocket to the Red Planet, being propelled and directed by technology that either does not exist today, or exists as a small-scale prototype in a lab somewhere. Their outbound trip would take about six months, but they would only be able to stay in Mars orbit for one month, and only on the surface for about two weeks. The crew would have time to... take some pictures, pick up some rocks, maybe look under some other rocks, and plant a flag but not nearly enough time for any meaningful exploration. Meanwhile, one crew member would have to stay behind in Martian orbit and guard the ship Michael Collins style. When their two weeks was up, the crew would board an ascent vehicle and rendezvous with the orbiting mothership for the return trip home. But because of the changing position of Mars and Earth during their six-month outbound trek, the ship would have to take a pretty complex route, notably using Venus to slingshot itself toward Earth. This flyby exposes the crew to much higher levels of solar radiation than a direct return to Earth, which is why it has been dubbed by some experts the Venus Flyby. After a 14-month trip, the crew returns to Earth victorious, and possibly cancer-ridden. And how much would this groundbreaking mission cost? $450 billion. Naturally, the US Congress weren't thrilled with the prospect of funding a project worth more than NASA's total budget at the time, just so a couple of astronauts could plant a flag and bring home some rocks. With that, the Space Exploration Initiative died a swift and probably deserved death. <laughs>